This just in, breaking news, our top story tonight. Alleged criminal busted after breaking into several rooms at the Paris Hotel searching for money. Bad guys breaking into people's rooms and stealing money and then getting caught? I guess we really aren't at the Rio anymore. But don't worry, there's still plenty of thievery going on at the World Series of Poker. Next up, a new poker strategy emerges with a masked man playing a poker tournament to the point where you could not tell who it was. I haven't seen a player with this few tells since uh, a few weeks ago. On this topic, Justin Bonomo speaks out on mask usage at the World Series and also offers his notes on online bullying. It's unfortunate to see like how popular bullying's become and like I really want to make a stand against bullying. It is sad how popular bullying has become on the internet. In fact, if you have something negative to say about someone, maybe you should just keep it to yourself. All this and more tonight on... Is it because my last name? Normally this is the point in the video where I ask you to buy something in order to help me recover from financial losses that I took while I was gambling. And today is no different. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need the help. I don't know what it's been, but for some reason in this channel, we've always struggled to get subscribers. You know, we've got a nice audience of people here. We've done a good viewership over the years but we just don't convert subs like a lot of other YouTube poker channels. No names in particular. And well, golly gee, it would just be swell if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button and show some support for one of your favorite poker YouTubers. I hope I'm in the top five. Moving on, let's get into our top story here today. We're gonna kick it off with talking about this break-in suspect caught at the Paris Hotel. Now, before we jump into it, we got a little backstory on what happened at the Rio. For many years, people complained that people would break into their hotel rooms at the Rio, which is where the World Series of Poker used to be, and steal their things from their room. This crescendoed when a few years back, Sean Deeb had his room broken into while he was in the room. As a quick note, I would recommend always using the deadbolt to your room when you're in the room. It's just a free roll. There is no reason not to other than it takes you one second to do, which, you know, I guess you got thousands of dollars, your general well-being and safety. And on the other hand, you lose one second. So, you know, tough trade off there to make. When the World Series of Poker moved from the Rio to its new location, people were excited about some of the safety considerations. Yes, it's much more annoying to get onto the strip. People have been complaining about the difficulty to get to the events, and that's certainly understandable. However, these hotels might care a little more about people getting robbed. And they do, with a sting operation set up at the Paris Hotel. According to this article from Casino.org, Paris Las Vegas security nabs alleged burglar after seven room break-ins. Basically, this guy broke into seven different guest rooms and stole over $5,000 at the Paris Hotel. Security guards placed a wallet stuffed with $600 in the bait room along with other valuable items and installed hidden surveillance cameras. By the way, $600 is a stuffed wallet. That barely gets you dinner at most of the places on the strip. Anyway, guards were on duty in the room next door. The suspect, Robert Black, walked in and stole the wallet, and guards sprang into action and apprehended him. According to the article, many people had had their rooms broken into and stuff stolen. And I just have to say, it's great to see a hotel that really cares about its guests. And when this happens, they respond in a, in a way that really helps save people in the future and maybe lets burglars know hey you can try but you might get caught with a staged room all in all great effort here and a happy story all around unless you were the criminal allegedly alleged criminal moving on this picture of a player playing a tournament in a full ensemble essentially devoted to masking his identity entirely which includes a mask sunglasses, and a hoodie has been making its way around on social media. The responses to this post have been mixed, and when I first saw it, I had my own thoughts. And before you listen to this next part of the video, why don't you let me know in the comments below, what do you think about people playing poker at the table dressed like this? Do you think this is acceptable or not? The question does become, according to the WSOP rules, players are not allowed to fully hide themselves. And the question becomes, what is the line where it's acceptable or not? Sunglasses, obviously acceptable. Masks, whether you like it or not, 
obviously acceptable. Hoodies, of course, obviously acceptable. But what about if all of these things are used to create a brick wall of your appearance where you are essentially anonymous? Personally, I think it's a bit much. The WSIP rule states, participants may not cover or conceal their facial identity. Tournament officials must be able to distinguish the identity of each participant at all times and may instruct participants to remove any materials that inhibit their identification, etc., etc. Participants may wear sunglasses and sweatshirts with hoods, but may be asked to remove them if tournament officials cannot identify them. Well, this does seem pretty clear cut. I mean, do you know who this guy is? Related to this topic, ever looking to change the accepted social norms, Maurice Fitzgibbon weighed in with his thoughts. But before he did, he had some words for poker vlogger Ryan DePaulo. I don't really know who this guy is, so it's just like someone I don't really want to devote energy to. Ouch, doesn't even know who Ryan DePaulo is. Would you say maybe that Bonomo is using his platform to seek harm or intimidate or coerce someone perceived as vulnerable? Maybe a tinge? Nah, nah, can't be. Anyway, back to masks. My thoughts on the mask thing are pretty simple. Like, if people want to wear a mask, like, they're not hurting anyone. Why would you have a problem with it? If anything, they're keeping people safer. Um, I, I just think we have kind of like, obviously there's a political split in the US and it's unfortunate to see like how popular bullying's become. And like, I really want to make a stand against bullying. Like, I just, I think there should be more compassion in the world, you know? Great point from Justin here. We definitely need more compassion in the world. But there are people out there that don't seem very compassionate. Don't want to name any names here, but, you know, I kind of do, though. Bonomo's always done this where he gets way too carried away on certain issues. For example, I remember a poker tournament I played with Justin where he was explaining to me how Trump winning this election is exactly how it started with Hitler. And I said, interesting, I'm going to go ahead and play my cutoff range now and I hope the subject changes. It did not. The way I see it, there are two buckets of people when it comes to masks. Bucket number one, people that have serious health ailments or are around people with serious health ailments. So maybe they have a young child that has problems with its immune system or a very old person that's you know struggling with something lately or perhaps they have some kind of, of condition. For people like that, it's totally reasonable and understandable to want to wear a mask. The reason why it gets a bit weird with that category in general is where were these masks before COVID? A lot of the sicknesses that people are getting now are similar to the pre-COVID era as the COVID potency has dropped off significantly. There are issues with this for a few different reasons, but you can tell from this graph, overall COVID deaths have gone down dramatically. We are now down to something around the pre-COVID era when it comes to uh, how dangerous it is to be out and about. So why do we see so many more masks now than we saw before COVID? That's the question I think we have to ask ourselves. But regardless, I certainly can understand wanting to wear a mask for those types of reasons. However, this is where we get to bucket number two. And this is really the problem that I think most people have with masks. Bucket number two are people that are wearing masks to gain an advantage. Either they think it will tilt people that don't like to have to look at masks, or they are trying to get a reaction out of people, or they are essentially trying to hide tells on their face when they make decisions, or they're just trying to be generally insufferable. Look, this is going to be a divisive topic for a very long time, but there's a pretty clear reason why the two most liberal people in the poker playing community are the ones still wearing masks. And the reason has become it has become essentially a political statement about what you think about the world at large, rather than the fact that masks actually have very little value. And these guys realistically don't need them. I know Bonomo is going to argue on Twitter that he will. And by the way, I went deep, deep into the an anonymous streets to find out what Bonomo is tweeting because I am blocked. And there's no way to get his tweets otherwise. So it was a very successful blocking. And you got to stand up for those principles. It's just a damn shame I'm never going to get to see his tweets. As for bullying, this topic is just so funny to me. How broad reaching we're going to use the term bullying to describe things that are going on. And it's been like this for as long as I can remember. Rather than actually confront issues and try and respond to them, people will just hide behind a blanket response saying, You're bullying me and you shouldn't be bullying because bullying is bad and that guy's bad. So he's a bully and we need to stop. Like, look. Talk about the issues. Talk about the subject matter. Don't just hide behind this statement trying to 
chalk it up to bullying, right? I mean, like, what 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 is Bonomo saying here? So if Bonomo insults me, that's not bullying. But if he insults Apollo, that's not bullying. But if someone insults someone wearing a mask, that is. But like, what what is the line that we're chalking here as bullying? So dumb. But luckily here at Poker News Productions, we've got you covered with the latest in advanced anti-bullying techniques, of course, brought to you by UpswingPoker.com. Exciting to announce our new course, Anti-Bullying Mastery. Let's go ahead and take a look what the course entails. With over 30 hours of exclusive anti-bullying topics, we've got all of the latest and greatest names to let you know how to make sure that you are behaving appropriately online. Let's take a look at the coaches. Rob Young joins the course on knowing when to be respectful at the poker table. I call. Oh, oh he does my. call. And he'll see the. Vicious for Rob on the end, by the way, is a good call for me. Oh, yeah. Definitely some tactics you can take there to add to your anti bullying arsenal. But what about something a little bit different? How about Tony G on ethics and grace in competition? Yeah! Yeah, baby! Come on, Russian, get out! It's time to go. Look at this. Look how he's doing. Look how he's playing. Look how ugly this is. Tony G certainly a man keen on bullying prevention. But what about Eric Person with his exclusive module on knowing when to not kick a man while he's down? But we have a wide variety of people here in the anti-bullying seminar, including Isaac Haxton, who talks about bridging the gap between both sides of the political aisle. Among Americans winning at the highest stakes tournaments, there might not be a single one who has voted Republican in the last four presidential elections. I don't know for sure, and I guess there's probably an exception, but I can't think of a likely one. Ah, uh, a beacon of inclusivity. On that note, how about a collaboration of inclusiveness and brotherhood by Phil Galfon and Matt Berkey. No one fucking likes you, man. And finally, of course, the cherry on top of our anti-bullying package is my own personal part of it on if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything off camera because that shit will get so many clicks. That's right, my very own course on how to monetize bullying. Seven years of experience, I think my resume speaks for itself. I was gonna cover Poker Hall of Fame stuff today, but uh, given the length of this video, let's go ahead and just cover that tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys back again soon. Peace.